Godfrey Fox Ministry uh, here in Carolina. And so uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about our ministry. Um, some of you have heard some of this before, but I have some original material. So even if you have heard it, you know, hopefully it'll be still interesting to you. And so well, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, uh, we're grateful to be um, together this morning and to be in your presence, to be in the presence of brothers and sisters uh, in Christ for encouragement, uh, for spurring on one another to love and good deeds. And so we pray that that would take place this morning, that you would spur us on, that you would challenge us to know that you have a purpose and plan for us, to use us for your glory, uh, to share your love with others. So I pray that as we speak, as we talk together today, that you would be glorified, that your name would be exalted, and ultimately that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, we're going to start uh, with a little bit of uh, this is a question for you, so we'll give you uh, an opportunity to speak. Has anyone in this room uh, experienced some type of disaster, natural disaster or other disaster in their lives? Okay, some. We'll, we'll start here. You guys want to share? Oh, well, say no more. <laughs> Four hurricanes. Four hurricanes. Wow. Did you? Okay. And did you guys sustain any damage to your home? Yeah. We put a couple of roofs on, uh, trees, fences, all kinds of things. Yeah. We had a church community. We had a youth group that would go out and cut trees down and stuff. Okay. We called our youth pastor, Three Fingers Wilson. He <laughs> <laughs> wasn't very good at it. He was, because he handed chainsaws to the middle school kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not so, a good idea. Yeah. So did they come and work at your house? Uh, Three Fingers Wilson and yeah, his group? Yeah, we had some, you know, <laughs> church friends, like with the fence. We had to put the fence back up, and we had some kids and people from the church. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, roofs and things like that, you just put the blue tarp on for a while, and you get your Right. And, okay. Um, yeah. We had, I have a lot of stories. <laughs> okay. We can't, we can't that, so. Yeah. Yeah, so you understand the uncertainty, the disruption to your life, uh, you know, and, and the people around you. But you also, it sounds like you experienced what our ministry hopes to provide, and that is some support uh, as you're going through and walking through these times. So you had something. Okay. Yeah. Were you living here at the time? Yeah. And did you have damage in your property? <laughs> a tree that I wanted to cut down anyway. Oh, okay. Oh, so it was a blessing. The only bathroom in their house was a couple months before they got every, you know, they were pockets of just ones and two houses they wouldn't work on. They wanted to get on the community to get them for their collectors. Yeah, so they okay. had hard time. Yeah. They had their only bathroom was. Yeah, they would have to go to the neighbors. Have a visit. And he, his was still there, so they would. Oh wow! Yeah, that's inconvenient. Yeah. <laughs> we were concerned about how to get rid of that tree, and uh, you know, I was just saying, well, how, how are we going to get rid of that tree? And uh, one day later, they knocked on my door and said, "Can I take your wood?" And I'm like, "Oh yes. wow! <laughs> yes, you can." Praise God! Yeah. Yeah. And the church came. Uh huh. <laughs> the, the shingle. <laughs> the one shingle. <laughs> yeah. Was one year old. One year old. Oh. You don't remember it? No. Okay. A little bit. We were in our room singing Kumbaya, and he's just like. Oh. Tracy, were you guys here for that? Yeah, for you guys. We went through that, but I, at that time I really wasn't in the church, and I wasn't oh. much in it. But, but uh, all we lost was a tree too. But uh, we're in Purdue, you know. 
Well, it's funny because your experience reminds me, I was doing a presentation in Baltimore and kind of talking about the, you know, the power of the storms and how it can really upset people's lives and cause trauma. And so I was asking people to share their story. And this one lady raised her hand and said, uh, they had a hurricane came through, it destroyed their home. She said, but it was great. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you're not helping me here. She's like, I was a kid and we had to live in a hotel and they had a pool. <laughs> she said, that was the one, the greatest thing. We thought that was the greatest thing. I'm like, I'm like, come on, lady, you're not helping me here. So. Silver lining on every day. Yeah, silver lining. Did, did you have some? Okay, and what happened? For how long? Okay. Yeah. Was your house damaged at all? Or okay. Just the inconvenience and yeah, it really disrupts life and it's kind of like uh, everything comes. To, you know, you're chugging along, you know, and everything's fine, and all of a sudden everything's not. And so, um, so that's part of our ministry comes in to people's lives and. You know, sometimes it's four days, sometimes it's years, you know, or months uh, before, you know, you're back to normal in some respect. All right, so I'm going to share a little bit. Uh, some of you, like I said, have heard some of this, but, you know, it's a good reminder, and, and we'll uh, kind of cruise through. So this is our family. My wife, Julie, is here with us. Uh, she's wearing the red dress. and. Uh, she's got the green dress on today, so. <laughs> but uh, that's our family. I wonder if this it doesn't look right. Uh, we've got uh, our two daughters, and they're both married. And we've got uh, two grandsons. I'll show you a better picture of them. This is my favorite picture of them. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. So, uh, yeah, so uh, Jessen is our... Uh, two-year-old grandson and then his little baby brother uh, Shepherd is six months old uh, and some of you know we'll give you an update uh, our youngest grandson Shepherd was born deaf yeah and you've seen that in the newsletter yeah thank you thank you so much we'll share that with our daughter we appreciate that so he's getting uh, and we'll send out uh, email to if you're at our newsletter list if you're not on our newsletter list, you can sign up at the little table in the back. Most of you, I think, are on that list. But if you're not getting our newsletter, you can <clears throat> sign up. Uh, but we'll send out, he's getting cochlear implants uh, in September when he's nine months old. So uh, we'll send out a prayer reminder at that time. And you guys can pray for, for that surgery and that it would be effective. Uh, they're hopeful that at that early age, he can develop normal language skills and everything. So, yeah. Uh, so, who we are, we were talking about this yesterday, uh, Mike was mentioning uh, this, I think it was, we were talking about uh, M&A, uh, Mission North America, that's the domestic branch of our uh, missions in the PCA. So you have MTW, which is Mission to the World, and that's all the global uh, outreach, and then Mission North America, uh, we exist to strengthen the church to serve, grow, and multiply. So. Uh, a lot of people don't know that we have all these ministries. I was talking with you about it, right? Yeah. Yesterday, yeah. Um, so if you look at the list, uh, we, we have almost 30, I think it's around 30 ministries that are uh, part of a mission in North America. We were just at General Assembly a couple weeks ago, and we had a big, in the <coughs> exhibition hall, we had a big uh, row, M&A row, with all the different ministries, and we had a big disaster response uh, set up there as well. But there's, you know, Metanoia. Uh, some of you guys know Mark Casson. Has he been here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, Mark was part of that. He's now, Mark has taken a different role at m and He's uh, over all these ministries. He's uh, one of the minist- uh, missions, or one of the directors uh, who serves for all of these. And then they have a new director. I can't remember his Lowell, name. Uh, Lowell. Lowell. Uh, Lowell. Yeah, Lowell. Yeah, who, who has another powerful testimony if you've ever get a chance. Mm-hmm. So Metanoia and uh, all these other things. So a lot of people don't know that our denomination mm-hmm. is involved in all these, but disaster response, you know, I have it highlighted there. We are just one of many uh, ministries of our denomination. So uh, I'm gonna show you a video and maybe some of you have seen this and I've seen it a, a bunch of times, but it's always good. Uh, it's a good reminder and it's a good summary kind of, of what we do, who we are. So I think, I don't know if you... Somebody from m and called me on Friday before the storm hit. He said, well, we want to touch base with you now so that we're going to come and we'd like to use your church as a kind of a camp to, to go rebuild the city. My thought was, oh, you're not going to be coming here. You're going to go to Baton Rouge. Still not thinking that it was going to hit us. But when the hurricane hit on Sunday, Mark was here on Tuesday from Baton Rouge to set up camp in our parking lot. We, we were so glad to see him. Part of what we do with disaster response is we watch all the storms that come in that might hit land. And so for Hurricane Ida, we saw that it was gonna come in somewhere in Louisiana, and we didn't know where. And so about a day or two before the storm hit, uh, we stocked up on supplies and stayed about two hours away from where we thought the storm would hit, so it was safe. When we arrived here in New Orleans, our first priority and our first job was to check out the status of the churches and the buildings and how they, what condition they were in. So we started calling to our warehouses to tell them what equipment we needed and what we needed first and second and third. We needed bunkhouse trailers and shower trailers for the teams to come in. So that was our first priority. We had quite a few teams that came in to help out for this storm and they came from churches and, and wide ranges of of Texas and Louisiana and um, and Mississippi and Florida. Each of these teams represents a church and it wouldn't be possible to do this extent of of the work if we didn't have these teams come in. What I liked about MNA was they first go to your church people and then they go to people you know and then they go to the community at large. They just went out in the community who can we help? If they saw a tree down or a uh, tree on a roof, can we you know, help cut down the tree, put a tarp on your roof? And that's what they did. And so that's what I think is very helpful, how they minister to us and then to our community. Since 2004, Mission to North America has coordinated responses to 65 major storms in the United States and Canada in 25 different states and during that time we have mobilized over 170,000 PCA volunteers. The volunteers that serve with us do a variety of different tasks and it could be mucking out houses that are flooded you know and filled up with mud, it could be chainsaw teams, but it also includes long-term recovery which is mostly carpentry work where we're rebuilding homes. Another major aspect of what we do is we build Sheds of Hope, which are eight by eight storage sheds that we provide to homeowners free of charge. And so since 2006, we've built over 1,700 
storage sheds, and that's well over $2 million worth of sheds that we've given away to homeowners to help them store their belongings and tools during the rebuilding process. Here at St. Rock Community Church, we had three individuals who uh, suffered um, uh, extensive damage uh, in their homes, mostly by roof damage that then allowed water into the walls, to the floors, to the attics. m and uh, allowed us to um, uh, get very needed money into their hands for repair uh, and renovation of those properties. I'm so thankful for St. Rock Church that they you know, were able to assist and able to help us out because I'd probably still be paying back if I had to make loans and things like that. And then we have hurricane season coming back again. My church immediately stepped in. Aaron is on the phone trying to find out, you need anything, Miss Joy, are you okay? Are y'all doing okay? It's an amazing feeling to have people to come to your rescue. Our church as it is, as it stands, we choose to be in a community that is not um, necessarily affluent or has a lot of money. And so we know that we may never be self-sufficient. And so in that regard, it's extremely helpful for us to be able to receive this financial assistance that helps our church to be able to continue to operate, to continue to grow. So to receive this assistance from m a was huge for us and it really did keep our church up and running and um, it's just been a, an extremely important gift for our, our church. The PCA has channeled about $20 million through m a to diaconates of affected churches and so those funds are used for rebuilding to operate disaster sites to pay for insurance deductibles to pay for uh, to support staff workers when uh, tithes and offerings are down after the storm when they're not meeting for worship and the expenses are up and so m a is able to come alongside churches in order to hold their head up for a while M&A reached out to me before I had a chance. I mean, M&A has always been that way. It's just so great to know that we're being, we're being watched and we're being cared for, we're being loved on from afar. And M&A really is the face of the PCA for us in that way. M&A Disaster Relief is, it has been. It's, it's the first, uh, and at each one of these disasters has been the first presence there. As far as our congregation evacuating, uh, I think most people left. We had several families that had roof damage or uh, water intrusion in the house. Um, and so just being able to follow up with them. Um, M&A was available to tarp roofs if needed, um, at least patch places that you know may have had allowed immediate access to homes. Just check the security of houses, um, but then be available to help you know, clear roads and meet with the neighbors and check in on folks that were still in town. Um, they were self-sustaining on their own, uh, so we didn't necessarily have to worry about them, but we knew that they were available to call on to go check on people. When Ida blew through, or started coming through, and we decided to evacuate early before the storm came in. Once we did finally get back, um, what we found was that um, our house had gotten water in it, um, a lot of water in it, and there was just mold up and down the walls and a lot of places in the basement area. Mission North America provided a lot of funds for us. Um, there's a little bit of pride that comes in when it comes to accepting something like that, but you know, God humbles us in that kind of way. To accept help, God offers His grace freely for us, and as a body, as a church, we replicate that. We try to offer that to each other. The glorious part about disaster response, I'm just gonna tell you right now, there is no other ministry that can have the, the clearest opportunity for the gospel than disaster response. What God does in a disaster is He either blows away or burns away or washes away barriers and what's left is, a, is standing there is a soul that is vulnerable for the gospel. It's just an opportunity for us to be able to come in 
and to be able to love that person with gospel love. There are people who were touched deeply by what the church did for them and uh, M&A uh, helped empower our church to be able to do that. And, uh, and now they want to know about the Lord who, uh, who inspires us to give so selflessly to strangers and, uh, and neighbors. And, um, and that's a beautiful thing. And it's like our Lord. You know, you go through the Gospels uh, and it's, you know, it's word, deed, word, deed, word, deed over and over. You know, the Lord says something, then he does something. And he says something, then he does something. And uh, M&A is uh, a ministry that really uh, models that very well for us and uh, in a lot of ways is able to uh, tutor the church and how to do that better. So that gives you a little uh, taste of who we are. It's a great video and uh, I think it really uh, covers a lot of, of what I am going to cover here quickly, but it uh, is good. I just wanted to point out that, you know, disasters aren't always somewhere else. You know, with Hugo, that's been a while, but, you know, that really affected this area, not just the coast. Uh, recently, we were talking about this storm in Cherryville, oh. or Cherville. Oh. Uh, if you're a local person, right? Uh, May 17, 2023, there was these straight line winds. Was anyone around for that? Or did you hear about that? I think there was like 85 hour, mile an hour winds that came through. And yeah, last year. Yeah, last year. 2023. Yeah. Oh, look. Oh. Yeah, so uh, there was some storm damage from that. But the point being that you never know. Uh, you never know where the Lord's going to allow uh, something to take place. It could be right here in your community, or it could be somewhere else. Uh, either way, there are opportunities for us to help. Uh, in this case, you know, if uh, you know something happens in this area, Harvest Church and the local churches can come together, and we can, with the help of M and A, uh, help reach out in these communities. Uh, so what, what do we do? We train, we coach, we encourage, we facilitate, and we develop resources. And here at Harvest, we've done all of those. Uh, we've had training here. We did a Sheds of Hope training. There was a Shed of Hope uh, built right behind here. If you haven't seen it, you need to walk out. And uh, that was, we did a training, and we're keeping equipment in there now uh, to help us. Coaching, you know, how can we better prepare for disasters, encouraging, facilitating, and developing resources. And right here in this church, you all are developing resources. We've got a trailer now and some equipment, so we're developing those so that this can be a church that can send people out, send equipment out into the area and, and beyond as is needed. So uh, appreciate Harvest and your commitment to our ministry. Uh, in terms of our finances, everything that is done with disaster responses through the generous contribution of individuals and churches um, and ministry staff or ministry, missionary status. Uh, I am one of your missionaries. You all support me on a monthly basis. And so Julie and I appreciate your partnership in ministry. Um, but like he, like Arkley was talking about, you know, millions of dollars have been given and distributed to churches uh, and folks in need. So. All that comes from the generosity of people like you. Uh, we want to always keep the gospel at the center of what we do. You know, this is important. We're not just a social service agency. Uh, we are ministers of the gospel. By this we know love. He laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. If anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Uh, one of the pastors was talking about how, you know, this is a word and deed ministry. Jesus uh, would say something and then he would do something. And so, you know, this verse shows us that it's not just words that we speak. We've got to back it up with actions. And if you flip it around, it's not just doing something, but it's also sharing. Uh, so talking to folks, you know, why, 
when people ask the question, why are you here? Why are you, you know, cleaning up our house and our yard? And why are you doing this? It opens the door for us to say we're here because uh, we love Jesus and we want to share that love with you. So we always want to be gospel-centered. And we believe that this chart here, that good works lead to goodwill, which gives us opportunities to share the good news. So uh, I know that Scott Deneen is a good teacher and has been teaching you about the Reformed faith. We know that we're not saved by our works. We can't earn our way into heaven. Uh, but our works have a place uh, because God uses our works to do his work. And so I, this is an example. When we went down to Hurricane, um, help with Hurricane Ian in 2022, uh, there was a church from Columbia, South Carolina, Watershed Church in Columbia. And this was a church that had been flooded out. If you remember, uh, I think it was 2015, there was like the thousand year flood in Columbia and some of the dams actually broke and uh, the water flooded the community. And so Watershed Church was, is a church that's in the bottom part of an old mill. And the dam just above the church broke and the whole church was flooded out. And so they were recipients of uh, the disaster response, people coming in and helping clean up and helping them get back on their feet. And so this church is very much uh, aware of the impact that disaster response can, can have. So when Hurricane Ian took place, Watershed was one of the first churches to say, hey, you know, we're gonna go down. We know what it's like, so we're gonna go. And so this church went down, I was able to work with them. Uh, and we went to this couple's house. Uh, it's a, a couple that you can see, an older couple there, and uh, we cleaned up their yard. They had trees down all over the place and had a chance to get to know them. Well, this couple uh, were not uh, churchgoers. They were not attending the church that we were serving with. <clears throat> Uh, but it was a lady at the church who was friends with this lady. Uh, so this Covenant Life Church in, uh, I think it's in Sarasota. Um, so this lady from Covenant Life Church had this friend. And uh, so later that evening, uh, this lady called her friend at the, you know, the, the church and said, hey, she was just in tears. She just couldn't believe that a group from South Carolina would come down and spend an entire day cleaning up and, and working and sweating and doing all that. So uh, this is an example of our being there and serving opened the door up for this lady to share with her friend, you know, about the good news of Jesus. So it just <clears throat> is kind of how it works. The other thing is, uh, and this was part of uh, what was covered in the video, that we are local church focused. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So you see that is bolded there, because in our ministry, we believe there are two aspects. We are to share uh, with the world, with the community, uh, but also there's a responsibility for us in our ministry to make sure the household of God is taken care of as well. The churches, the leadership, the members. And so uh, that's part of our ministry. So um, what we do is when a storm comes or hits, we are touching base with the church leadership, the pastors, the elders, the deacons, and checking in to see how they're doing because our, our goal is to come alongside the church leadership uh, to provide uh, a response into the community. So we want the local church to always be kind of the focus of what we're doing. If we're in a community, say we're in Lincolnton after disaster, we're not just going there anonymously saying, oh, we're from this big nationwide organization. Uh, we go in saying, hey, we are representing Harvest Church, which is just down the street here. Um, and so we always like to have that local church connection. And then that way, when people come in, say there's that team from South Carolina comes and in, into Lincolnton and they're staying here and they're working here, they can point people back to Harvest Church. And even when they go home, they know that Harvest Church will continue that ministry. So 
That's very important. Mercy motiv motivated, we're going to be talking about this uh, in my sermon today. Uh, this is from the parable of the Good Samaritan. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. So we're a mercy ministry. We go out, uh, we're not earning money, we're not earning brownie points with God or anything like that. We're just, just plain showing mercy to people because God has shown mercy to us. All right, so what is my role? Uh, to partner with PCA churches and presbyteries. And yesterday, I was here uh, meeting with some of the folks and looking at the trailer in the, in the Shed of Hope. And if you haven't seen that, you know, Mike would be happy to show you that. Maybe some of you haven't seen that equipment yet that you've gotten near the trailer, but he'd be happy to, after church at some point, you know, just, and maybe, maybe we could do that after church today. We could, if you haven't seen it, we could uh, take a tour and uh, so, but we were talking yesterday about also uh, maybe having this stuff available to our presbytery, you know, to have a ministry to our presbytery uh, where churches could come and could borrow the equipment uh, within our presbytery. So, uh, so we were concerned, you know, with churches and connecting churches with other churches in the area so that we can all work together. So if there's a disaster, my role will be to coordinate and mobilize the response, whatever that would look like, uh, helping to bring in teams from other places if that's necessary, raising awareness. So I'm constantly traveling around, going to churches, telling them about this. A lot of churches don't know that we have this ministry. And so that's part of our job is to educate, network and connect and promote the gospel wherever we go. Uh, so training in disaster preparedness, uh, providing spiritual encouragement to the hurting. This is something that we're incorporating into our training as well. Uh, you know, how do you speak with people who have gone through trauma? You know, how do you encourage them? Chainsaw, uh, skid steer, some of you have done that. Uh, chainsaw, we might want to do that because you have some new chainsaws and we want to make sure that we don't have three finger, what was his name? Three finger? Wilson. Three finger Wilson, yeah. We don't want any three finger Wilsons around here, so. Uh, and Sheds of Hope, we did a training right here on Sheds of Hope. Uh, we do a practical skills training where we teach people how to put tarps on roofs, how to uh, repair drywall, chainsaw. The irony of this is, you know, this guy here, friend of, of mine, uh, he's got the equipment, he's got the chaps, the helmet, the gloves, and so he did a great job cutting this tree down. But then as he was walking away, uh, he twisted his ankle on a stump <laughs> and was out of commission the rest of the trip. So poor guy. Uh, but he's better now. So, uh, so we got, apparently we've got to not just train people on how to use a chainsaw, but how to walk. <laughs> Skid steer training. Some of you guys have done this. Uh, I think, Phyllis, you've, you're trained on this, right? And, uh, Mike, you were part of that, and Tracy, so uh, that, that's a good class. Sheds of Hope. Uh, I want to share something that uh, has happened recently, and some of you are getting my emails on this, but uh, we did a Shed of Hope training here, and part of the goal of that was to have people who have put these sheds together, because from time to time, uh, we need that, especially after a disaster, a big disaster, we'll put up you know, dozens of these sheds. Uh, but recently, uh, we've built two sheds, one in South Carolina and Columbia, a pastor of a church, PCA church, his house burned down. And so we were able to put up a shed for him to be able to store equipment uh, while they're rebuilding. And then uh, more recently, uh, another house fire uh, affected a family at a PCA church in Salters, South Carolina, this little uh, remote rural community in South Carolina so we were able to go and build a shed for this family and uh, they were so appreciative and I was sharing yesterday how when I was talking with this man he said that after the fire happened uh, there's a lot of activity and people are very concerned and they're helping you and uh, providing stuff but he said that didn't last very long he said 
ever since then we feel kind of like we've been forgotten and so we were able to come in with the shed and I said well anytime you feel like you're forgotten just look at that shed and remember that you know people are praying for you and care about you and so uh, hopefully we can help to continue to help that family they need furniture and appliances and all that so uh, we're hoping to be able to get some of that for them to uh, to furnish their home so disasters can be big huge you know Katrina like uh, catastrophes disasters can be affecting one family but for that family it's just as big a disaster as you know a huge hurricane so Sheds of Hope is a unique ministry of our de denomination and uh, you guys are part of that so our role is to communicate in a disaster to assess the needs to set up base camp you saw a lot of this in the video deploy mission teams tarping all this sheds of hope and then uh, bringing spiritual encouragement uh, partnership we're already doing this uh, with you guys here um, and so there's lots of ways to to partner uh, you can come on trips but you can also support people that are coming or support us in other ways uh, the warehouse uh, some of you how many of you have been to the warehouse mike you've been you guys been okay and uh, yeah i know uh, so you guys have been a part of this so in rome georgia this is a great mission trip because you can tell your friends i went on a mission trip to rome <laughs> and then they're jealous and you, until you say Rome, Georgia, and they're like, oh, okay, well, that's not so exciting. But you can see, I took a picture here. Oh, yeah. Um, this, is, this is what happens when you serve with MA disaster response. <laughs> is that Tracy in the middle? That is Tracy. <laughs> so, okay, we'll, we'll point out, because you know some of these people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Right. One that, that's the highest I've ever, I've ever jumped in my life. Right there. Uh, that's Marcy Ryan, so you know. There's Fred. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he couldn't quite get off the ground. Neither, neither could Tracy. You know? <laughs> Phyllis is on her tippy toes there. That's Luke Bynum. So that was a trip that we took out uh, a couple years ago to the warehouse. But the warehouse is a great place to serve. Um, to be involved and find out more about our ministry. So mm -hmm. I thought you guys would appreciate that. Uh, so the final word, final challenge for you all today is this. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who's in heaven. So really, ultimately, the, the goal, the purpose, everything that we do is for this reason, to ultimately to bring glory to God and to honor him and to do his work in this world. And so that's what our ministry is about. Um, we have a couple minutes, just a couple minutes for questions. Yes, the, uh, comments. The comments. The potion solver that fell at this house burned. How did that come about as far as the knowledge of that event and, and how did it come to <clears throat> Yeah, well, yeah, that's interesting because the pastor of the church in Salters <clears throat> had seen something along the way about the Sheds of Hope. He had either seen something at General Assembly or, so he was, in the back of his mind, he was aware of it. So he called Sherry, you know, he found the office number, he called and said, hey, can we get one of these sheds for an individual? And so that's how, and then Sherry called me and said, you know, see if you can organize that. Okay. So we're dependent in a lot of ways on uh, the church the local church to tell us what the needs are because a lot of times we're not in that community or we don't even know about the need and so that's part of the education if, as people more churches know what we do then the pastors or the elders or deacons would be you know know who i am and would be you know more apt to give us a call if there's a need so we're trying to educate that it doesn't have to be a huge nationwide disaster for for people to benefit from our ministry so other questions or thoughts mike did you want to say anything i mean you're, you're kind of uh spearheading well, some of the stuff here yeah, so our um, our uh, uh program over here is in the process we're not there yet we, we need to uh get the, the trailer uh figured out but we do want to get there soon and so we can send out to other churches on the message that we are available 
and our equipment is available and kind of do the education part with you and um, you know locally you know if, if we can you know but uh, also out of the PGA you mentioned so that's kind of like what we're, we mm -hmm. want to do yeah have it available for us but also right other other churches around yeah and I want to just follow up with that because part of my passion and uh, Tracy and Phyllis know this because uh, most of you know this, but I was the pastor of First Pres uh, for a number of years, and so I have a close connection with this area, First Pres in Stanley. And so uh, Tracy, Phyllis, and I, we spent a lot of time together. <laughs> and, uh, but one of the things that, um, that was and part of the reason why I'm in this ministry is we were doing men's ministry. We were doing a, what we call man day where we would reach out into our community. And uh, that, I would just get so excited uh, doing that that I said, I, I need to do this more. And so I signed up for <laughs> a disaster response. Uh, but that's part of my passion um, is that the local church is reaching out into the community, doing the same things that we do with the disaster response, but doing it you know, on a smaller scale. But maybe there's people, neighbors that you have or people within your church that have a small mini disaster, you know, something in their house they need help with. Uh, or they have, maybe you have uh, someone that you know, uh, a widow or a single mom or somebody who has a big branch that came down in their yard and they don't, you know, they need some help. So you got some chainsaws here, send out a couple guys to, or ladies, uh, if they're trained in that and uh, help clean up. So that's my passion is that you know, Harvest Church will have opportunities, like what Mike was saying, right here in this community. You might not even need our help, but it might be something small that you all can do as a church to be a witness here. So, all right. Well, I think that's any other final questions or thoughts? All right. Uh, how many of you have been on a disaster response? I know Tracy and Phyllis for sure. Have you, were you at that church in um, New Orleans where the, that Redeemer church? Down on the water down the front? No, it was that, did you recognize that church and the guy with the beard that was speaking? We were in Gulfport. Oh, okay, yeah. all right, yeah. Well, it's a, an interesting connection with um, one of my first things that I did that connected me with First Pres, I was living in Wilmington and uh, my parents were at First Pres, and they called me up and said, hey, we're going down to Katrina to do this uh, response. And I don't think you guys were on that, that trip. But, um, so I went down, I got to meet a bunch of folks from uh, First Pres, and uh, Percy was there, and the, the Robinsons. And so, um, so I was getting to know people that Little did I know, years later would be you know part of the church body that where I was a pastor. Um, but anyway, so we went down to uh, Katrina to help after that, and we worked with that Redeemer Church to, and uh, helped with it in the New Orleans. But anyway, but some of you may at some point uh, come and serve with me, and I look forward to that. And some of you will be here. Uh, praying and helping to support those who are going. So that's kind of how it works. Well, let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you for this time that we've had to share together. I thank you for uh, your mercy, which is new every morning. Thank you that you have shown us mercy so that we can in turn show mercy to others. I pray for Harvest Church that you would guide and lead them as they develop this ministry, uh, this mercy ministry to their community and to help others uh, who have been affected uh, in some way and Lord we don't know the future of this ministry but uh, Lord we commit it into your hands and ask that you would use it for your glory uh, that others would see these good works uh, that our light would shine before men so that ultimately you would be glorified we pray in Jesus name Amen